this is the ASUS RG Strix Z370-F and this one is the Z370 Pro Gaming Tough Board. Let's take a look at it. So first things first, the Tough brand has had a bit of a reshuffle. So with the Tough board, it is actually a bit more of a budget and kind of value oriented board rather than one of the sort of big thermal armory type ones. I do believe they're still making those, but for this specific one, this one is uh, the, the pro gaming board, which is again, more of the sort of uh, budget value side. With the Strix board, we're actually seeing the opposite of that where it's actually becoming a more premium type of board. You're having more premium features and premium aesthetics. So that's kind of interesting. Now with the Z370 platform, as I mentioned in my 8700K review, it's basically the same as Z270 for the most part. There isn't really a massive amount of features that have been added here. There are a few updates, so you know stuff like this uh, Strix board, which is a little bit more mid-range than the high-end ROG boards. This one now has an addressable LED header as well as two other uh, standard, you know, Aura headers. So I suppose that is kind of a bit of a trickle down of uh, feature set, but otherwise the actual feature sets themselves haven't really changed much. So with that said, let's take a look at the boards themselves and the features they offer. Now starting off with the Strix board, you'll notice that this is a very stylish board with their actually full metal chipset and M.2 heatsink. The heatsink itself actually features a conductive or a non-conductive thermal pad on the back and allows for a pretty decent amount of cooling as it's connected to the full size of this block. Now it's not going to be perfect as the, there's no active cooling involved, but it's certainly going to be better, better than a thin piece of metal or no heatsink at all. Up at the top of the board of course you have the very nice Strix embossed uh, VRM heat sinks uh, as well as obviously the socket 1151 in the center. You also have four dims of DDR4 uh, you know, sockets available to you and obviously uh, you do have an 8 pin power connector at the top. As I said you do have a, a 12 volt aura connector on the top as well as another fan connector and some LEDs that are available for your testing uh, so you can see what, was, what uh, if there are any issues especially while overclocking for CPU, uh, RAM, VGA and boot device. Next to that beautiful chipset heatsink you will find six SATA ports as well as a right angled USB 3.0 connector as well as uh, obviously the front panel audio, uh, fan headers, USB 2 and another USB 3 front panel header. No uh, 3.1 Gen 2 connector on this board, in fact on either of the boards uh, just to mention. Carrying on down the bottom you will find the fan extension header as well as the addressable LED header, a TPM connector as well as the uh, standard uh, 12 volt aura header, uh, a COM ports and the standard front panel audio connections. When it comes to PCIe and M.2 connectivity here, you have two M.2 slots, one under the chipset heatsink and one just under the CPU socket. Although neither of these are actually directly connected to the CPU, all of them are passed through the chipset, which as I explained in my 8700K review is actually a bit of a bottleneck. So feel free to check out that video for more information on the 8700K and a little bit on the boards themselves. You also have a total of three PCIe X16 length slots, although the bottom one is connected in X4 and the center one is connected in X8. When it comes to the rear IO, you do have some display connections available, although with this sort of CPU, you probably won't want to be using them, but they are available if you need them. You also have a USB 3.1 type A and type C port, two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, gigabit ethernet, and your standard 7.1 audio. I would mention though that this board seems to be pretty lacking in USB ports. A lot of them have you know upwards of eight available to you, whereas this one has six if you include the type C port. So this one is uh, certainly a little bit sparse in that region. And just quickly running over the tough board, you have a very similar layout, except the center PCIe slot, which is still directly connected to the CPU. That one isn't a reinforced slot. Otherwise, you do have uh, the same M.2 connectivity available, although no heatsink on the bottom one either. And otherwise, in terms of the rear IO, you actually have a little bit more available. On the back, you have a full set of 7.1 audio, gigabit ethernet, four USB 3.0 ports, as well as two USB 3.1s, two USB USB 2s and obviously a couple of display connectors as well. Now, of course, both boards do light up quite nicely, but of course the Strix does feature the nice sort of multicolor LED bit. And otherwise, in terms of the BIOSes, they actually feature basically the same BIOS with just a slightly different aesthetic to them. So I'll show you the ROG one as that's the coolest red one, but otherwise, as I said, they feature very similar options available. And you also see uh, the full suite of overclocking capabilities, which is actually really very nice. Um, I wasn't able
able to push my 8700K much past about 4.7 gigahertz, but um, that is uh, very possible on both of these boards, so I'm very pleased with that. So what are my thoughts for these boards? Well, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of mixed because while well, the boards themselves are very nice, and of course, if you're planning on picking up one of the new six core 12 thread 8700K chips, uh, which means you will need a Z370 board, then either of these boards are a really nice shout, and I'm personally really liking this Strix board for its fairly premium features, but not quite at the full premium price you might expect. So that one is pretty nice, but at the same time, I'm a little bit sort of, I guess, disappointed, uh, probably more Intel than Asus here, but just the fact that these boards are basically identical to their last generation counterparts, at least on price point anyway. Obviously the, the Tough has had a bit of a, a shake up for where it sits in the market, but in terms of at least its price point competitors uh, from the last generation, you're looking at basically the same feature set for a little bit more money, just with obviously that Z370 uh, you know, socket and chipset available to you. So I guess that, that's kind of the, the price you pay for upgrading, but either way, if you are looking at either of these boards, they are still a pretty nice shout. When it comes to scoring, I will score these separately as there are sort of slightly different value and feature set propositions. So starting off with the tough board for me, this is going to be a four for five money. I think in terms of performance, it's going to be a five. And I think in terms of functionality, I'm going to go with a four. When it comes to uh, styling for me, it's also going to be a four and a Tetra maybe score of a four as well. I think I'm going to go with the worth money award as it is certainly more of a budget board and if you're after an, a non-RGB setup, for example, uh, with you know one of the new CPUs, you can still overclock it and all that sort of stuff, it does a really nice job. When it comes to the Strix board for me, this is going to be, I think, a 4 for 5 money as well, although performance is going to be a 5 and features uh, or functionality, I think it's going to be a 4.5. I think that rear IO is really quite missing there and I'd like to see more available and perhaps Wi-Fi built in, but otherwise uh, it's still a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice featured board. Of course, when it comes to styling for me, I think this is going to be a 4.5. I really do like the styling of it and in terms of text and BB score, it's going to be a 4.5 and I think a gold award as well. So there's my thoughts on it. I'd love to hear what you think of either of these boards in the comments down below. What do you think of the 8700K and the new Z370 platform and what are you thinking about uh, just the whole sort of, well, I guess, platform in general? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you want to check out the price or just any more information about these boards when and where you watch them, take a look at the links in the description down below. I'd also love it if you could use the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links. They do genuinely help me out and support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday basis, except for launch videos like this one where it's coming out on a Thursday, but whatever. I'd also really appreciate it if you check out some of the other videos, and if you're new here, take a look at that subscribe button too. Otherwise, as I said, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next one.